seemed like the best hero. Yeah. Decent versus Jug, obviously. You you have that, yeah, that blink call then through the spin as well. Yeah, it's incredibly good against the the Jug Mag, right? You know, anytime there's a there's an RP. I mean, all three of these heroes can sort of mess with the flow. You know, Jug's going to want to get in there. Suddenly, there's a Will O' Wisp over him, or suddenly there's a stolen RP holding him down, or suddenly there's an Axe jumping on him with the call. It it sort of stops them from being able to get that combo playoff, which is which is sort of more prevalent when it is a core Magnus, as, as we do expect it to be from Ramses. You know, so having all these abilities to sort of stop those sort of combo plays happening is is very nice for Aster. So the other three was like uh, maybe Omni Knight or something, because. You know, just to block out all that physical damage. But they wanted Axe, so they wanted to be able to, like, actually win the laning phase. Axe is also really good at cutting the creep wave, which Grimstroke, Juggernaut, you may feel like you need to do that. It That may also be a, the, like, they can run the, the Grimstroke with Mag as well. Because um, that is also actually mm -hmm. a pretty good lane. Yep. So Ooh, I, the crit will That's oh, a special, yeah, oh, yeah. That's a special one. That's a team fight as well. Yeah. And okay, so you've got Dark Willow versus Keeper. You've got the, these supports. They bring a lot to the team fights. These are like four of the biggest team fight supports you can really get. Obviously, you don't have much linking the Grim still, as we talked about. You do have the double curse crown now, which isn't terrible. Obviously, not right away or guaranteed. But curious what they will end it with on EG. Going to be the Abed, and he does get last pick. So this is the first time it's not just going to be. Here's an invoker, you know, whatever. Go no. to your own thing. You get this overall last pick for Abed. But Aster still needs to pick a hero as well. Will they go middle or carry? They go with the invoker. So very popular hero this series, this whole day, honestly. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm liking Cap's thought trainer, the, the, the Abed Ember still. I think that's... We'll see if he gets banned really out here. Nice. Mm. Maybe they won't ban it because obviously, you know, invoker, tornado, just takes off the flame guard. Not terrible in life. Yeah. Um, I, still I mean, they game. could TA, right? TA versus Invoker, and then an early Roche taking hero. It's nice. Doesn't like combo real well with Mag. I think I'd prefer to have like a more, a little bit more mix of damage. Okay. Some magic damage somewhere in there. So maybe Alina or something. I don't know what Alina does well with against the Grim Stroke as well. Gets rid of the Will O' Wisp, but does indeed give you that that functionality to really utilize the Soul Bind. Puck's not. Bad. It's going to be this hero that wants to build uh, a Yules potentially, so another extra way to play around these these, he these heroes like the Axe. Curious. Yeah, but I mean, I, I was thinking Puck, Puck would be really nice for the combo plays. The whole sort of fear from the the Willow with the Dream Call is very yeah. nice. And uh, and you know, our bed is he he used to be quite a hot one on the Puck. He did. It's been yeah. a while now. Feels yeah. like he plays those I'd, more like I'd carry love to see based. him bring it back yeah. in. Uh, gyro. What are some like traditional ways to deal with Jug? There was like Phantom Lancer was always good, right? Because you had Doppelganger. Yeah. I you mean, always have the illusions to dodge the not dodge the ulti, but absorb the ulti, which is nice. Is it, is it one of the big ones? Uh, the old Slark, or do you feel it gets pressured too much by the other heroes? I feel like this is a nice, nice yeah. game to dark packed off stuff. Slark was always a nice go-to, but yeah. um, like the only thing that's kind of annoying is the the bug. But even that, you have. Normally, such high attack speed that you, you can hit it off, even though you can't dark packs off. But everything else, you you're gonna be able to purge away. And of course, Shadow Dance is a is a lifesaver against the 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 Jug's approaches with the Omni Slash. Mm, they could, but maybe they're worried about the speed that EG plays because like EG played that last game really fast, and you do not want to be a Slark in a game where EG is at your base at 16 minutes in, and you have high ground. maybe a Drums and yeah. a Blade of Alacrity so or something. That, yeah. Then they might sort of fare something, obviously not the Gyro as it's banned, but something that can do a similar job as the Gyro. They do have uh, Claw Swix, Invoker, and Axe that like will kind of cover that ground, so okay. I could see it possible them uh, drafting a late game hero like that. I think you do, right? I mean, if you it is a Claw Swix, Invoker, yeah. I, well, I mean, I think you definitely, I mean, you need a super light. Can you give them the right zoom here. zoom? Get the blood seeker in. Yeah. Good follow up to the axe, the cottle. Run it fast. CK. I still don't know if that's good versus mag jug. Yep. Maybe it's not. I think it might be the blood seeker. You might be right. I think blood seeker just sort of fits the bill. Yeah. Yeah. Blood seeker would play fast. They wouldn't have like great ways to taking towers though. That's the problem. And like you would feel this uncomfortable, like 
we're not taking enough map control and mag juggernauts getting farming. bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger. And the advantage okay. EG has here is if you draft a mid game hero like that, then EG can just slightly outlate game you. Ah, they, they take, take the ML. I think there's, this is also taking it away from Feels EG. Like it's oh, yeah. yeah, that's And the nice. SCC opportunity of, like, again, yeah. you can always draft that Ember Spirit. And back in his mid playing days, it was one of his main ones, right, wasn't it? The SCCC Ember. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And no one's too. But side lane Ember obviously is a different sort of. It's a different. It's not. It I is. think it's struggled a lot. I've seen a lot of side lane Embers fall a little flat. And they go with the DK. Oh. I mean, I think that, that that's nice for EG because it fits the way they played last game, right? You now throw a DK into this mix. He's helping you with the push, the sustain, the backup from the healing ward and the dragon arm, blood armor, dragon's blood. Uh, the armor's going to be hard to kill. And uh, he has, obviously, he sees the mid matchup, so he's he's happy to play at mid uh, against that Chuan Invoker. Yeah. And this is one of those lines for EG. It feels like, once again, it could just be knocking at your door. 18, 19, you have a DK, you have a healing ward behind yeah. you. And this Ember, I mean, the thing is, you will get farm. Like, actually, you might get more farm as a side lane Ember, but your levels, they do not come as quick in the side lane. I think the only person I've seen really dominate with side lane Ember is Mickey. He's one of the few still plays that side lane. He still yeah. owns yeah. with it very well. It's so hard. I'm curious, it is hard. SEC does play the hero, but as you said, it's a whole different thing when you're getting, like, three left, like, you're three levels down from what you're no yeah, used it's, to it's being a, it's as a totally an Ember. Yeah, it's a totally different game. You're playing a totally different game as the Ember Spirit. It's... X6S has the ba best axe cosmetics, <laughs> the immortals, and then the uh, the diaper, the diaper that has axe right there on the groin. So you like? I don't know. I'm still not a fan of it. his name's Axe. Why the hell is he using his fist? I I'm still a fan of the blood chaser. You know the one he drags around. It's a good one. Maybe he still does have the axe on him. He's just hiding it very well. In his diaper. Um, we don't. I know. didn't want to say it, but it could be in there. My goodness. So who's, who's draft are we favoring then? I mean, we see him. This is it. This is game freaking number three. You've got a mag jug first picked mm. again. I, I think you, you got to favor EG. EG yeah. really did crush that early game, last game in game two. But I think they've got, got a great more. lineup to do it again. If they get even anywhere close to playing as well as they did in the lanes for the first 10 minutes, they could run this game over in less than 30. Okay. Cap, you agree? Or? I am also siding with EG. I'm a little bit concerned that they didn't give Abed like a playmaker. Um, you know, DK. DK's nice here because, you know, like the near instant stun against Ember Spirit and Invoker is a really good way to catch them out. As you already pointed out, the healing ward mixed with Dragonite pushing you is really nice and all those sorts of things. So it, it, it like fits the game really well. I'm just a little bit concerned that they won't have uh, Abed the Playmaker, who's, who's set them up for so much success in both of their games so far. He <laughs> played the perfect game one. Oh, that is too good. And game two, I think he did about as well as you could expect him to do on that Invoker. He was super disruptive. Yeah, he, was. he created so Just much space for them. And all right, we get into it. EG, Radiant, Aster, Dire. This is it. Pretty much a best of one. You either go to the winner's bracket, you lose this, and you're you're down that BO1 territory. That's a big game. Absolutely no sense. Big, big game. But yeah, they did. The, like they got their the, key, the, the level 25 Dota Plus crit yeah. Willow. <laughs> it's beautiful to see. I like it. No kid Invoker. Oh, that is. Yeah. Absolutely. No I'm a fan sense. of the non kid Invoker. Dark Artistry Cape still the best cosmetic for him. So. I, I will say that I think, uh, oh nice, the late Sunstrike hits fly. Best damage. <laughs> Gives him a bop there. Um, what's this thing? Oh, the, uh, I, I, I definitely saw like the Mac versus Abed matchup. No. Like, oh man, Mac's a really good laner. Chuan, I don't see that same impact yeah. against Abed, the same opponent, you know? Yeah, it definitely seems like he's better overall in the game, but laning phase definitely a, a tad weaker. And well, we're gonna see some initiation. I love it. Fades actually stealing that safe rune, so it will be a two for two exchange. EG maybe thinking they're gonna get away with that third one, but good job by Fade. Yeah, Rubik with that Bassy, of course, giving that plus eight damage, that mana regen in that off lane. I think this lane might be hard. The Ramses level one in power against a melee hero. Oh, just um, Dark Willow just hitting you with that base yeah. attack time. That's nothing. I mean, yeah. I, I'm I'm more for the side side lane Ember. Uh, you know, SCCC's got a lot to show. This it's not easy. There's a reason why 
Not many teams you are playing die. the side lane anyway. Yet yeah. true. It can just Long. get absolutely squashed in its early stages. But it looks oh, like Shockwave and he's uh, pulling. Did he need to pull? I think you can win this lane straight up. Well, seems like he doesn't want to. And SCZ, he's just gonna slight a fist harass the Dark Willow. Maybe he feels like um, this is a better way to pressure SCC. Just let Crit hit him under the tower, do kind of that. Yeah, and like force him to last hit underneath tower, um, where Ember Spirit's base damage is not bad. But that does mean so it's a, a DK as well versus an Invoker middle. We've seen this matchup before. Nothing going to be too crazy. You might just see Abed with no mana, but it is Exhort again on the Invoker. So more and more Exhort Invokers popping up against Spin Bottom. Won't find anyone. Doesn't really do any damage. And the range creep denied by Boba Cuff. Well, he, at least he got rid of that battle hunger. Nope. Get away from me. Oh, man. Tons of denies now. Arteezy. He's feeling bad. Yeah, XXS oh, Axe, wow. man. That was, uh, that was a classic. Yeah. Right? It was. Lots of denies. Arteezy. Not feeling too great about it. They do get that offlane pull, though, from Crit. The whole creep wave pulled to their side. SCC will have to fight for those runes. Or not the runes, pardon me, the the neutrals. Two in a rune is bottom though, speaking of that. And yeah, this I mean this is game three, right? It's gonna be a little slower pace. Crit is getting gone on route, will end up hitting. SCC still continuing to chase. Will he get in range? Right click after right click from the keeper, and he will make it out. Healing cell. And all right, honestly, the Ember, he's having a pretty good time right he's, now. He's, he's farming one. Well. Yeah. They're just harassing this. I love it. Every time Sleight of Fist is up, they just harass Chris. In strength is victory. So this laning phase seems to be going pretty good for Aster. I mean, obviously oh. not getting too out of control, but all the top CS right now. Look at this. Oh my goodness, the Juggernaut's getting spun Arteezy, multiple he He's dead. He's all definitely dead. This way, he's dead, oh. yeah. Well, oh, where's the RNG? Where's oh the spin? Oh my god. It didn't spin. There was, where was the RNG there for what? XXS? Dude, what he actually didn't. <laughs> he, dude, he spun twice and on one creep it. and then none on multiple. Arteezy has to, he has to know. He's oh. like, oh wow. I mean, we saw the prediction from Dota Plus last game favoring uh, EG. I think Gaben's an EG fan. Might be that. I can't believe he didn't spin one time. One Dude, Arteez even attacked him. That attack actually yeah. got him the kill. No spin. It was a pretty good head, like heads up play by Arteez going yeah. for the, like, recognizing if I let him salve, he's just going to keep running me down. And his, Axe's lane is actually going to be quite good. I At least, if I'm going to die here, I have to make sure I at least kill yeah. his regen. Yep. And then he just didn't happen to uh, die at all. Arteez got first floor. So man, this uh, this sleight of fist spam is actually just owning pretty much. He's just sleight of fisting the Dark Willow every single time it's off cooldown, and then the Keeper of the Lights just chakra magicking, and Crit's actually having a, a god awful time top lane right now. Level only two and a half, running back to the base. Didn't realize how annoying this this plus damage of the sleight of fist yeah. when you have permanent full mana. Well, you I mean you also are spamming it more often yep. with Coddle, right? Yep. Like normally you can't spam it this often, but he's just literally not even in the creep just then. They will get a spin bottom. Can they get this axe again? Battle hunger, get plenty of armor. He'll be able to make it under the tower. And yeah, he's gonna be Why? completely okay. Why might not be? Back There's down. the blast, and they're not even gonna be able to get the kill on this Rubik. Yeah, that's that with a three against the two of them. And they lose one of theirs. EG. Crumbling a little bit. Aster, meanwhile, up 2-1, middle lane. How is it going? DK's 23-9, Invoker 21-4. So Invoker not doing two terrible runes top. Oh, good attempt from Rams. He wanted oh, yeah. They're prepared there, Aster. You see the tip. Understandable. That was a, that was a deserved tip. After they did, you know, he all tried. They, they all tipped somebody in the early game. So Aster will do it right back. And a 1K lead for the Dire Sign. We talked about it. They kind of have a few of the same heroes from last game when they dominated the laning phase. But without that morphling, it seems Aster has a lot better laning phase himself. Mid lane crit is smoked up. Almost level three, but not quite. 
literally one experience off. Bottom lane. This Rubik has a full urn almost sitting in the stash. Yeah, it feels... EG, they're just very slow besides his DK. Everyone else is, is kind of struggling in their lane a tad bit. Slavid will try to pressure this tower. Fade's sitting there, though. There's a lot of heroes rotating to the mid lane. Trips. He's trying to have a bit of a go on to Boboka. Does have fly. And with that, oh, and a Shadow Realm lifted. ahead. Nice. That'll do it. I love that play. Just cool Shadow Realm, yeah, can't get lifted. Now, oh my goodness. This in both It's only level one, so he won't be able to kill Chuan, but just pushing him back and. This is just the, Another it seems like one? the meta right now. It's like everyone full rotates into mid when the Siege <laughs> Wagon push comes through. Yeah. And then the Fade Bolt will slow this down quite a bit. It is mostly that poison taking down the tower, but still. I'm going to go for the drag back onto our bet. Thinks well on him, will get himself over the ice wall. Extra TP in from SCCC, wants to chase for this. The Curse Crown's down as well as the Dragon Tail onto him. And that'll put a stop to his advances, so SCCC won't be able to get any action out of this, but they do keep that tower alive for a little longer in the mid. You know, the, not, not for much longer, though. It's it did get incredibly low. Yeah, one of the cool Denial. parts about this, yeah. like one of the side benefits, you get a lot of damage on this mid tower. Great. Uh, but when you walk, rotate over, and then you force the enemy, usually they're going to be like, TP. they have to TP yeah. into the mid lane, in which case you are able to TP back to your side lanes, and Ramses, for example, got himself like a, a wave and a half of like just total free farm while Ember Spirit wasn't there. You know, the Arteezy uh, had the 1v1 against XXS, you know, which isn't that bad. It would have been great if they forced XXS to rotate as well, but fortunately this Axe was smart enough to know like he cannot be leaving his lane right now. Just got to focus on his own farm. So phase boots up on Arteezy. The Axe has phase boots as well in his stash. And well, they did lose that middle tower. It got denied by the Invoker, so no team gold going around. And yeah, the game has slowed down. This is a very it is a very typical game three, right? Neither team really wants to make that big mistake. We saw a lot of early team fights in the other two games, but this one, you don't want to give up a three for zero early. You lose all your towers. Definitely going to play it safer. Abed will harass this top tower. Looks like Dyer does want to defend it. No ulti from Fade quite yet. Eight minutes in. Lightning light will help. Yeah, just trying to slow it down as much as you can, but... Won't matter, not, no glyph. No, not, not at all against the push of these heroes. There you go. Great kill, bottom on fly. <laughs> fly laughs about it, but... Now his tower is going to get harassed, and they might be able to bring it. Obviously not the best tower damage, but you got some creeps, and your axe is going to cut the next wave. Should be a free tower bottom. So really the only the only big thing gone is that middle tier one tower for the dire side. What does that really do for the ratings? They're, not, they're still not really oh, they're playing defending. the top jungle that much. They are defending I bottom. Hey, okay, and oh, the root is going to go down on Ember, but he's just gone. Looks like they want this deny. Uh-oh. They do end up getting in, but XXS, he's there, and there's a stun strike. Should be an easy kill on Fly. Nice double stun, though. Still moving forward, SCC. Healing South? Maybe going for crit instead now. Root goes, is anyone gonna help? They just won't get a kill. Did he, wow. did he not have the mana to jump to the Remnant? I think the Remnant Blast would have just got the kill. But I guess not. I guess, uh, yeah, I, I guess he has low like mana, so maybe not, yeah. He, he did use one. No, he used a Slight of Fist instead. If he just Remnanted instead of Slight of Fisting, he would have got the kill. But I just wanted to play it safe and not overuse his mana, just in case he needed to Flame Guard. Two to three right now. Aster leading over EG. Towers are going in favor currently of EG, just that one middle tower we talked about. Bounty runes are spawning. and. Gonna be a two for two exchange plus the regen. It's just Ramsey's popped it. It does mean that Invis rune top though. We'll see if Stone Important picks it up. Goes for a gank with it. Ah, that'll scoop it up here. I guess he won't. He's gonna ping the Invis rune, but the Coddle might just go scouting. Ah, I think, yeah, none of them are gonna get it then. It's gonna go the way of Asta. <laughs> At least they know that someone on Asta's got it, so they won't. And it is just a cottle without all, so hardly the, the scariest Invis rune carry. 
So EG probably just don't care too much. What do you think uh, this game favors? This uh, very slow paced, pretty farm heavy game. Does it favor the mag jug I overall? Think, yeah, or? across the board, you, you, you're going to look at the jug mag and say that they there's going to be more points in the game where EG's lineup's going to be happy. Especially right. since Aster won't be able to very easily take uh, the mid or off lane tower, which means that Jug will always have a lot of space to work his Empower Magic with. You know, he's just going to be running around the map with no shortage of camps to farm. I don't know. Crit just farming bottom. There's a smoke. It's Abed and Fly moving down this way. They have the ward. Ward actually goes down as they are doing this gank. They know where the axe is, though. They saw him run into that tree line, not showing himself, though. Yep, what up? They find him now. They need that ink swell. It is level two. They throw it up, and this should just be an easy kill on the axe. These ganks are always great for a Dragonite because you pop your Dragon form and turn it into a tower push. So what uh, Fane should be doing right now is, is running across to the bottom lane as quick as possible because he wants to get ahead of that, start Illuminate Blasting and uh, Blinding Light, keep that pressure off. But uh, Ovet actually went back to mid instead. Maybe just assume. They don't really have the vision around that tower. He doesn't want to risk yeah. just going in and dying. Just yeah. get that bling dagger, 500 gold. There's a double damage bottom. Who's going to get it? It'll just get killed. And he's top lane. SCC still just farming. Same with the Juggernaut. Has the Javelin on Ember close to that Maelstrom. Oh, yeah. Wait, we're going phase Maelstrom. No drums. No drums. So no not drums. many stats. 1,000 HP. Definitely don't want to just get disabled somehow and, and die. Well, and with that blink coming out soon, as you said, on our bed. Scary. That's a... It's a risky, risky. F feeling the pressure, I guess, to be able to offer an extra bit of damage in in these early fights that they're getting involved in. But uh, so you're not having the drums, you you do feel that. You know, we're running around with a phase maelstrom. You, you you feel a little naked as the Ember. So DK is 200, 300 away from Blink. Axe about 500. Both those are gonna be the real playmakers in this game. So as they farm that up, be curious to see. When it's shot, does he act? It was on the courier. Check him. Has he got it now? Who? DK? No, the uh, the Ember. Oh, no, yeah. you know, he really doesn't have it. It's not on the Corrosive. So no, okay. Still pretty far away. Whoa, and Abed, he's going to get scout out. Do we have a TP to help him? Will Fade use his ulti? I don't think he wants to. That's a pretty tough kill. And SCCC is sort of jumping in and out. That's all his mana gone, and nothing is done. He's oh. got to get away from this. They've lost Papoka to Arteezy. Sure was fade too. And the Omni Slash. Fade's gone as well. That was uh, a smoke gone wrong there from Asta. Yep. Not the... Uh, you can tell Abed, he, he must not be a silver tier. Yeah, he's not a silver tier Dragonite because he spammed uh, an ally line, hero line. <laughs> if and anything been, from yeah. this series, he's been doing all the all chat lines <laughs> as often as possible. What have you learned? The, uh, 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 one one thing to notice, if this was a mid oh, spirit. Oh, he just Sorry. respawned, bless him. I think you'd be going uh, Spirit Vessel, right? On the Ember Spirit, the Spirit Vessel has been the build that like everyone's yep. been going lately, Especially and it would be very DK. good against uh, DK. And you've got this healing ward in, in uh, but because they don't have that, they don't have a Spirit Vessel hero at all, right? Because uh, Axe isn't going to go for it. He's yeah. probably going to go for Blade Mail. Like I more. guess Rubik's yeah. getting it. He, he has the oh, urn. Is he? Yeah, he is. He has the urn. He's okay. actually pretty close. Just needs that Vitality Booster. Oh, that's not too bad at all then. This Dark Willow crit has his Yules in a hundred gold. And yeah, the last two kills, they just go in AG's favor. Just two supports bottom. They, yeah, they tried to go into DK. And at this point in the game, the DK was middle and actually has a decent amount of farm. You're, you're just not really killing him unless you commit a lot of heroes. Oh, I mean, yeah, just like having It's like those, a mini timber saw. Yeah, those two braces and the max passive. Like, even this, like the Ember, I don't think really hurts or threatens Arbed too much. As long as he gets back up within a few seconds, this DK is very unlikely to die quick enough. Uh, even if asked to do smoke up and get on top of him, as we saw just now. And well, Richie's getting close to that defusal. What does that mean? SCC does the have Maelstrom the Maelstrom. It, it will be flying out on the chicken right now. It has an arcane rune as well. The axe blinks there, going blade mill next. And the invoker, we really haven't seen much out of him this game. He's level 13, has the Midas, going the Ags. Just Pretty similar to the, the last two Invoker games we've seen. Very farm juggernaut again, though. Luckily, the Invoker's not too far behind. Last game, it felt like the, the cores were real far behind the juggernaut. This game, not as much.
Not bad. He hasn't gotten much done with his blink. They did get that one kill with it, but besides that, the blink really hasn't done too much for him. Well, it helps speed up his farming a bit, I guess. Going camp to camp lane to lane. They get the jump. Gun strike down. They get the quick kill on fly. EG, they're looking at just getting the rest of them out of there. Will-O-Wisp was dropped. Won't be able to catch anyone else. So it's just the death at the, at the position five. CCC can't really commit on to Ramses. Ramses is able to easily skewer himself away and of course will be going for that pipe which will further make the, the game at the safe lane Ember even harder really. It's going to take out a lot of his damage once Ramses does get that done. Still just six to four, less than a thousand gold lead. There's going to be the three man smoke, Abed and the two supports on EG. Looks like they want to do a, a, a loop-de-loop -loop around in the middle. Has the full yules on Dark Willow, so they have the quick setup if they need. Try and take this play to get some good vision inside the triangle. And if you succeed in the smoke gank, you'd be able to turn it into a... Uh, Probably a tier 2 or tier 1 bottom. Yeah, maybe a pressure in tier 2 mid, but they don't connect with anything. All right. So the the gold lead just switching, yeah. Gold lead just switching between those two now. Very, very even. Both teams completely okay with what's happening right now. Yeah, I think it's great that Aster always seems to like keep up in net worth against the, the mag lineups yeah. for the first like 15, 20 minutes. But then the Juggernaut gets the Diffuse the Blade and Manta, and then he becomes like uh, a very big team fight threat. And EG uses that power to start taking a bunch of towers and forcing fights, and that's where the, the net worth lead snowballed last time. And see if it goes a little bit better for Aster this time around, because they have really strong initiation. That's the great part about their lineup. They have a blink initiation into the Will-O-Wisp, but sadly, that smoke ink didn't work for them. Yeah, Dire will just get scouted out. Arteezy brings down that tier one bottom, and all right. They're just going to try to run at him. Arteezy's yes. like, please let me inhibit and ulti someone. Gets right. called in. He does. There will be the stun to stop the telekinesis follow-up. Oh, my. They get the log so double. Close. The Wisp, but Arteezy's dunked down. The jug's gone. Now they can turn their attention towards Arbed, surrounded by the fourth and knocked back into the Willow Wisp. Wall. Arbed is left alone. The rest of EG have built him. He's going to go for the GP, but I'm the call is back up. Again, there's some multiple calls there. Of course, Fade buffing up XXS and reducing that cooldown, so he just has so much lockdown on such a such a low cooldown, thanks to the old magic from the old man. Yep, and I, I love how after watching, like, Earthshaker Morphling, we forget, like, how good this Coddle really is, too. Like, the Coddle just set up. It was it was a call into a Sun Strike. He lays down the, the Coddle ulti right after the call, so it chains together perfectly. Yep. and. That was just very good team. That was just better teamwork from Aster, chaining their stunts perfectly and getting the dunk. With to be like a truly superior form of initiation, like Willowist is an instant, so you do need somebody else to start the fight for you, and then you could follow it up. Because especially when you get level 15, your cast range is so insane, you'll always be there in time. So this combo is going to work very nicely for the rest of the game. The the sun strike call into the follow up disable. I think, mean, you know, we, we, last game, I mean, we saw you have a very clean start, very few mistakes, but that sort of play there was, that was very well, over-aggressive. You know, RTZ, sure. he was just, he was just running in, straight beelining for the axe. Let's I mean, get a kill. Every time, XX says he's going to call him, yeah. unless RTZ is able to pull off some sort of dodge with an Omni Slash, but I guess he doesn't want to pop the Omni Slash, and even then, you know, it's getting range for it, you're, you're going to be in risk of getting called, so... A little bit of a, a risk taken there by Arteezy that does not pay off this time. <laughs> Quick pause, but we, uh, this went from an EG less than a thousand gold lead to yeah. Aster 3k yeah. lead, and all of a sudden, this DK, it feels like even him, right? If the Axe gets a call on this guy, they have a spirit vessel on this Rubik, he very well could just go down too. Like, he has no way of getting out of this. It feels like Aster has a a reasonably nice lead here. Nice call. Catches crit. He should just die here. Yep. And they get the room. Aster, they are looking pretty damn good right now. They're playing very nicely around the old XXS Axe. Star player that we've talked about over and over again here for Aster. And on his Axe, it's the, the perfect sort of hero for him to 
to grab control of the game, make the calls, make the jumps. Wow, he's going to have a fast BKB. Yeah. No, uh, no blade mail choice from him. Yeah, he had it queued up, but he's like, nah. I'll get the BKB. Why do you think just the Dark Willow, the initiation? What is it? He just I wants to be able I to go into fights? Yeah, I think he's afraid of the Yules. Like, he wants to be able to, like, bang on this jug when he gets the call and stuff. Oh. I so. think Dark Willow tried to Yule, so he tried to Yule. They had the Ember there, but yeah. Yule's himself. We've all been there. Why? Level 9 at 21 minutes in. Even with the tomes, can't get to the level 10. And that's a 90 GPM one. You really want to get to level 10 on that Grim Stroke. On the other side, Keeper of the Light, almost level 12. That's a level 2 ultimate, Odie. That's a good one. And it steps up. Those numbers, they get bigger every level. Hit count goes up. Flicker count yep. goes up. Just really does become harder and harder. And now if you're EG, you're like, well, we do have our win condition of an empowered jug, but they're looking, and this axe has a full – he has it. He has the yeah, full he's blade mill. Or, it's great or, timing for their smoke. They they have the Aghanim Scepter on the Invoker on top of that. So they feel pretty Ooh. good about forcing a fight. Will he be able to make it out? The blink is back up on Axe. Maybe going to find the Grim. He does. Sunstrike there into the dunk. Guaranteed every time. Takes the three mana region. And yeah. A very slow paced game into this perfect, you know, the, this, these two kills onto EG. And now the slow methodical game, all of a sudden, it feels like it's busted wide open for Aster. God. Aster just sucks at taking buildings in Roshan. It's the one problem. <laughs> yeah, they, like, so what happens when you have a lineup like this is that you have to play very clean once you start taking over the game. Like, you have to be able to, because you have to win so many fights to be able to get objectives, right? Yeah. Whereas for, for EG, it's like a little bit simpler in that regard. They win one or two fights, and DK they Jug will have really. Roshan. Yeah, they will take that Aegis, and then they will take that 2-2. Two -two. Well, we do have the BKB on, on Dragon Knight now, so a little bit harder to kill that hero. A lot bit harder, I'd say. What's the Jug going? Will he go the Scotty as well? He is. Which means on the other side, Ember going for that. Aghanim's next. Getting it uh, pretty far before his level 25. And on Invoker, standard boots of travel into the Black King bar. And Axe will be going for the Blade Mill still. I mean, they do have, like, such a good answer to the Jug. If they can get the Blade Mail on Axe in the level 20, the Cataclysm, the double Sun Strike on top of the Berserker's Call, that's going to be super hype alongside a... Uh, a blade mail BKB to Axe, so he's not going to yield so up in the air. He's going to force that Juggernaut to hit him and return damage back. Pretty much anyone they find after, if they get Cataclysm, Blink Call plus Cataclysm is a one-team fight at that point almost. And Arteezy, he is starting to solo Roche right now, but look at this Dire. TP into the Tier 2. They smoke up from the Courier. And oh boy, this could be real bad for EG. We'll see if Axe wants to just go in. He, he will. does. He's in. Gets the grab straight away onto Arteezy. Can Arteezy get himself out of this? We'll be able to get the Blade Fury out and get outside of the Will-O-Wisp. Now Ooh, turns the wall side. SCCC, what's he doing? He did not expect that DK to just be there and stun him in the DK. I mean, he's got buyback. He does. SCC, your whole team was there. You have to assume EG's whole team was there. And they're going to go in again. Here goes the Axe. Oh, oh, really? He's going to jump in. The Fear's out. SCCC. Oh, God. They've got to save him. Get him away. But he's feared. Rooted. Oh, oh, he gets whiffed. Ramses. And he's still oh, alive. Dodge. The dodge. He's still alive. Oh, no, he's Soul still alive. Locks them down. The stun out onto the two with that Dragon Tail follow-up. Oh, the call. Oh. XXS try his best to save SCCC. And XXS will get the three kills. Doesn't save SCCC. And in fact, maybe in trouble himself. Now Zarbed and Arteezy, they're still alive. XXS for the TPI, is there any Dragon Tail in time? Oh, we timed that perfectly. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy crap. He'll get away. I mean, XXS is trying his best, and SCCC, I don't know what he's trying to do, but it's not good. <laughs> that, it's a dieback. Like, the first Abs one, okay, you're going for a kill, understandable, but you buy back, and then you and play just that first. aggressively. Yeah, that one just called out XSS. He's like, dude, 
Dude, come on. No. <laughs> He's like, I'm did I have a, Did <laughs> Ichi have a ward on the high ground? They were pinging like uh, they think there was a ward there earlier. I don't believe they did. Cause, uh, well, how did DK get that jump is my question. Just because it was daytime or? I'm not sure. Because he just like blinked up into that that little bit of a high ground and w got the stun. Gr like, props to him for seeing that opportunity of, of Getting he you know, he knows he's gonna lead with his stun. The terror is gonna be able to follow up a chain stun on Ember Spirit. And just bought back. That's a massive win that could have gotten them Roshan if it was just they just managed to get the RP off to lock him down. Otherwise, he survives a little bit longer. They trade out some heroes, and now Roshan is still on the table for either team. And once again, the uh, Arteezy Juggernaut. He seems to be doing that a lot more. He splits open his Manta to get that Eye of Scotty. Okay, uh, Astro just has to play on their high ground from here on out. Around Roshan and let Chuan do his thing. He just needs, like, he has buyback, so let Chuan make the space for you that pulls EG away from the Roshan pit. Seems to be what he's doing as he pushes out bottom lane, pressures that tier 2, which could just go down. Forge Spear plus Siege Creep does do a lot of damage. Arteezy into the pit, though. You know there's a ward in the high ground, so Abed's gonna bravely Link up there, take it down for him. Abed knows he's he's not too scared. Now that he has the BKB, it's pretty hard to burst him down. Okay, well they've given up two towers to take this Roshan. If EG is forced back again, this is gonna be a big loss for them. XSS thought about it. Ramsey's on the side. Actually, he just the does have the RP. Oh, the Coddle might die before getting the flick off. He does. XSS puts the BKB, looking oh, to lock down Ramses, but Ramses is pretty tanky. Still alive, but the Sunstroke will get him. Space is there, though, for Arteezy to finish off Roche, pick up the Aegis, come outside of the pit. Poboka will die in a dragon form. Crit the control. Well. Hands to Arbed, too. Soulbind's there. This taunt will end soon. Arbed, can he get out of stun off the two of them? Now the will of whispers out. Arteezy on the back lines goes for Tron, but a Ghost Walk gets Tron out of the Omni Slash. Arbet still alive, finally taken out by the magical burst of SCCC's remnants. Arteezy is trying to chase on for this. Ramses has fought back. He's chasing. Whoa. Last back, and the Yules holds down the jug. And Asta, Asta will be able to get everyone else that. You see Ramses? He tried to get, like, he tried to cut through the Roshan pit with the skewer because yeah. the Will O Wisp blocks so. He, the rest of the team Gigantic. couldn't follow Arteezy, yeah. and he starts this skewer, and he just barely got clipped by the Will O Wisp, and it just killed the cooldown. Yep. As a result, so he was. If he gotten that off, he might have gotten a three man RP. But. The Will O Wisp, and that's why we do see this, this Coddle first pick hero. <sighs> Insane. Aster, they do have the 2k lead, but if you look at the net worth chart, it is Arteezy starting to, you know, pull ahead with He's, his mag uh, jug we've yeah. talked about. And yeah, SCCC, obviously, that dieback earlier was very painful for his net worth. It, it slowed down his game. and. And it's, it's tricky on an Ember. If you get behind this hero, you know, this is your carry, and at the moment he just doesn't feel that scary. Has to do a great job of fighting away from the Aegis hero. I, I noticed that last game, and I've noticed it this game. The, the way they take these fights, they just like hide around the Aegis hero as much as possible and just aggressively attack every other member of the team. We'll see if they want to do that. Aster still up by 2,000 gold, so they can make the plays they want, especially, you know, they had that Blade Mill BKB on the Axe. He should feel safe to pretty much jump anyone. You got the Sun Strike follow up. Rubik, Spear Vessel, Blink. Abed went for the 210 GPM, so he's saying this game, it's not going to end anytime soon. You like that? You agree with him? It yeah, does seem to be a very slower paced game, and that's a lot of gold per minute. I mean, basically, 15 minutes gives you, if you, like, the game lasts 15 minutes, that gives you the 25 strength, right? It gives you a reaver worth of gold. So at that point in time, you know, I think you only go the 25 strength if you think you're closing you're out the game right the game. now. Yeah. Okay. Curious to see what the, the Radiant just farming the dire jungle. Dire looking to maybe take a tier 2 top. It is just the Rubik showing, though. Seems Juggernaut's just gonna take a tier two and they might be able to defend their own top if they want. Or he can push the base, he won't. What oh, double damage. Is he gonna, yep, he's dropping the bottle on the ground for Arteezy. Arteezy says, wait up, let me kill this neutral camp. <laughs> Imagine like Invoker just ghost walks through that area. Gets the bottle, gets, gets the, the bottle, DD. gets Hell the DD. yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you. Okay. So do you think, I mean, it feels like you have this DK who almost has that AC very close. You now have a bottled up DD on the Juggernaut with an Aegis. Do you think of pressuring the high ground here? Yes. Okay. I think you do. I think you, you're you thinking about uh, smoking and seeing if you can maybe catch somebody. Failing that, just go straight for the high ground, force them back. Like, if you think they're splitting you right now, just you know, maybe poke at high ground to force them back. All right, well, the DK has enough for his AC, but the chicken currently out, so can't bring it out. And, yeah, this game. I mean, we've pretty much seen it. It's been about only one truly big fight. The rest just skirmishes and in these Roche things. There's going to be a scan. Bobaka and Crit dancing with each other. Oh, my goodness. He's still just there. No, he's, yeah. He's going to go for another round searching. Blink away. He doesn't need to yet. Wow. The fact he's just hiding there. No root on him. Oh. Oh. He just doesn't know. Whoa. Oh! Whoa! Surprise. That's a sick play. I love <laughs> it. Wait up. for me. Oh, you know what the best part is? He thinks there's a Tinker Ward now. Yeah. Crit thinks there's a ward up there on the cliff, but that was just the range creep showing his positioning. Yep, that was such a nice play. I love that it. Just nice. Cataclysm, I'll blow him up. Sure, if you think you can, and he does. And every kill counts. Aster, only a 1,000 gold up. Arteezy still just slowly gaining more and more net worth. Getting double Lotus Orbs, uh, I think. Oh, that's a fly kill now, too. Ah, but Boca's styling. Yeah. Ramsey's, though, he's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Whoa, uh, they've had it with Boca. No more of that. Steal this. Yep, Aegis goes down as they do that, but... Yeah, no more of him just sitting on this side field and save. Get the kill. These Lotus Orbs are going to be really dangerous, right? Because it's really good versus Dark Willow, but then it can bounce back on the Slash. It can bounce back the Abyssal Blade that uh, Arteezy's building up as well. Yeah. And uh, so I love the fact that both Rubik and XXS are going for one. Well, just a 1k lead. 30 kills, still almost a, a, a kill per minute here. What? My man just went attacking Prox counter helix. He's in. He That's is. maxing your damage. I mean, he's the carry. Doesn't do very he's much ready damage, to go. but step aside, SCCC yep. and Twan. All it takes is right, like one spin maybe on this juggernaut gets you one step closer to that dunk if you get the spin. All the bursts they can. SCC. He has that axe now. Almost has a full BKB. I mean, he'll really be online. BKB level 25 once you oh, get that yeah. remnant restore time and. All of a sudden, Ember really is a, a whole new hero at level 25. And the Invoker is actually doing such a good job. He is trying to keep up with the Juggernaut and doing a decent job of it. Almost has a full Lincoln Sphere now. So the DK can't just get on top of him. Roche may respawn a minute and a half. We'll see. Very quick one last game. Who do you favor now? I mean, we talked about it like earlier, you know, who's oh. catching up. The Juggernaut is farming a lot, but Invoker, Ember are the next two. Yeah, I mean, it's a very strange game. You know, and thinking about the level 25 Ember and stuff, because of these Lotus Orbs, I feel like the, the, a lot of the catch of EG is it's just going to be so much harder to execute. Ooh. I think uh, for me, it's, it's a lot like game one, where there is a slight advantage to evil geniuses, but that can easily be offset by uh, the right execution. Again, like Aster with these Lotus Orbs, mm. if they do bounce back and on the Slash, or RTZ Abyssal Blades himself with it, you know, like, though that could just offset the slight advantage that EG has and make it go the way of Aster. Oh, and a smoke double up here damage. from Aster. Yeah, will they see that double damage? They you will now. It. And he's like, oh, hell yeah. Into the bottle it goes. And oh, they're going to oh, fight. They've caught out Ramses. And they burst him down in time during the call. They can't. He will be able to skew it to the side. They've oh. got the only such out in SCCC. He's the first casualty at the fight. The Ember is gone. Now with the Abyssal Blade down into XXS, they try and turn for more. Arbet in the Dragon Ball slowing him down. RTZ shredding apart this axe. Double kill for RTZ. And in fact, back over the river, Crip. He's playing around with Paboka. Some support on support He's action. He's going to kill him, I think. Who's going to yeah. come out on top? Oh, he plays it safe, Baboka. Sees that the backup's coming in and doesn't want to feed away his oh, life. Oh, didn't get the bounty runes, though. 
do Bobolka. He's crazy. His I, Rubik is sick. Yeah, he chased down the Magnus in that fight, made sure they at least finished him off. I do want to ask. Are you, yeah, so it's an Orchids on the DK. Are you surprised he's not going the Axe? We have seen the Black Dragon has been shown to be pretty damn good, actually. Uh, so it gives a lot of things, right? The biggest thing is, like, I remember status resistance is really... Real. It's a lot of it, too, yeah. Uh, yeah. Magic resistance. I thought it gave status. attack range. Dude, that's a lot of text right there. It is. It's I was a lot. Say, I mean, it gives you a lot. If I, I wanted to read a Harry thing. Potter book, you know, I wouldn't. Then you would. I would not hover over <laughs> Elder Dragon 4 with that. And all right, they're just going to, you know, slowly siege down this tower, doing almost 50% of it. But they can't take it, and Roshan has respawned. The courier spots it out. Let's see if EG just runs straight towards it. It's tough, though. Everyone's alive now on Aster. Still a very even game, only a 3k lead. It is a little surprising just because uh, Invoker has Lincoln's and BKB, and Ember Spirit has Yule's and BKB. So I feel like Double Yule's and Bloodthorn are both kind of easily dealt with. But, uh, yeah, you know, they, if they can get with a BKB down, if they can get a Bloodthorn on somebody, that would be really big. Oh, sort of same fight, same place here. And in fact, whoa, Ahmed, he's in. Onto the axe. Spear Ooh, will miss. Nice force. They force him to the side. XXS pots the BKB. Gets back in there. Controlling the Dragon Knight for now. SCCC is trying to go for the backliners. But he's jules up. They're starting to play around with him. And now put the BKB. Ramses misses the RP. But they have the Abyssal Blade. Looks down at CCC. He jumps himself to safety. Gets back. Ahmed goes down that whole time. Double call coming from the, the Chakra Magic onto the Axe, and they just lock him down. Yeah, chain stuns. That's so crazy. Oh do it again. My. Actually, the lift there, taking RTZ out of the Cataclysm. So he will not take any damage from that. Now Master he can look hit. to try and turn. Another Tornado's out. Juan stepping in, lays down the Ice Wall. Cold Snap as well. XXS will soon be able to jump dead. back in. Gets the cool off. RTZ's down. And Asta, they'll dive on for more. Buybacks from both RTZ and Crit come into play. Baboka doesn't quite get Ramses. Crit with the cursed crown. Holds back Baboka. Baboka is silenced by Fly and will fall. EG having to utilize buybacks there to, to get some sort of a trade in return as it's that all important time. Roshan is up. Arbet's still dead for 40 seconds. Dude, Bobaka again, such a beast. He, like, he, really he, he, he catches the Dark Willow. He's playing on this high ground behind them, so there's no retreat. He kills the Dark Willow. He helps them kill the Juggernaut. And he almost gets the mag kill on top of everything else. If he hadn't fade bolted the Jug to make sure he died and focused all his efforts on the mag, he would have killed him and wouldn't even had to chase him. And look at this now, the gold, uh, the Invoker is actually getting very close to catching up with this Juggernaut now after that buyback. And you see, if he doesn't have spin or a BKB on this Juggernaut, Ice Wall actually just, you lose. You straight up just lose if you're stuck in an Ice Wall as a Juggernaut. Well, as is almost every melee hero, yeah, Ice true. Wall is such an insane ability. Late game, right? Oh, versus, it's like the best ability versus five second BKBs. It really is insane. Late game, middle. Sun Strike into an easy dunk. They get the kill on SCC top, though. He oh, was kind of just trying to split. He's been done a lot, SCC. He's got to be a little careful. He does. Oh, I mean, uh, he needs Orca to break Lincoln's, right? It's for the instant. Uh, oh, the... oh, he doesn't have Lincoln's on him. No, he has the Yules, yeah. Well, oh. he could break it on the Invoker. He needs it active, right? He does. Oh, steals okay. the healing ward on this Rubik. We saw it a, a couple of other fights. Has been pretty helpful, but Roche. The buyback. But Ramsey. Dragon form, it's wearing off. It's going to scare them off. EG, they're backing out of the pit whilst Roche is pretty low. This buyback is only worth it if they can actually get Roche on themselves and get an, Ag uh, an Aegis on Ember Spirit. It's going to be tough. I don't think either team wants to walk into the pit now with everyone alive on both sides. Yeah, it's so scary for uh, the pressure's more on Aster to take it because they know Dragon Form's down. They blew a buyback for this. They need that Aegis. But you're walking into an RP. Yeah, to be careful. You know he, well, you don't know he doesn't have Blink, because he actually does have it in five gold if he wishes to purchase it. Also, you're garbage in taking Rush. That, as you talked about. Oh, and they find RTZ, and he pulls him out, though. 
Once more of the Cataclysm. Let's do this. BKB in the second call. Extra bit of lockdown. RTT's been glimmered. They're trying to keep him alive. He'll get oh, the Arms out with the Lotus Sword. They're both jumping around the fight. CZ will be able to retreat over the high ground. SCCT one, he's trying to fight, but he's been abyssaled. The back is again, no. again. No. What a, this, is, this is December. Oh no. Dude, this axe is like, he is, he's, he's owning. And then the, the the Ember, <laughs> it, I mean, you can't be caught. He's been caught oh, four no. times like that now. All right, X6 does yeah. one more time. Oh, the Yules this time, DK in the air. He has a full Bloodthorn and a BKB on DK now, though. Get inside the pit. It's so low. It is. He got inside the pit. Can he grab it? Oh, it's no. to the radio of the kill. Aegis is still no on the floor. Has. RTZ will still be able to claim it. XXS dead after his valiant attempt to try and rectify the state of the game that SCCC's sort of been forcing it down into. Yeah, for dude, uh, XXS is telling I SCC right I now, just, you just know, stop. if you're alive, you son of a bitch, you could have actually grabbed the Aegis. <laughs> I actually stopped them at the perfect time, oh, but... No. <sighs> Goodness gracious, all of a sudden, <laughs> this great axe play, this great coddle play together, and all it takes is one death in December, oh, and then I'll the axe, yeah. He's Ooh. diving tier fours. Easy there, angry Buyback from XXS, of course, they know that there's no buyback available for... Uh, for oh, SCCC, Ramses this time smashes him with the RP, gets the two of them. Skewers back XXS. Oh, he pops the BKB, he's trying to run. The disarm on all of them will knock them back. As Twan's holding them as best oh, as he can. Cool he can. into Cataclysm. Arbet's low with the cheese. Arbet's back up to full. XXS being focused. They're trying to get him out of there. The tornado used to give him some sort of coverage. But XXS oh, no. surely will die as Arteezy finishes him off, turns his attention towards Baboka. They're forced back towards the base. And that what a game. three dead, EG, 6k up and in a perfect position to take a lot away from the base of Asta. Looked like that they are getting that step closer to closing up a game three. Chuan will step in, They're trying to save him. SCCC will be back in five. The Will O Wisp gives some safety for Chuan to get out of there. Now SCCC is back. This time. Still no axe. What though. can he do? Oh, oh no, dear. not again. Oh, oh well, well, he answered your question I mean, very quickly. This is sort of the classic thing, right? You know, someone picks more Shaker, thinks they're good, plays another hero. I'm only joking. You know, it's at CCC. He's a legend, he but the a side game. lane Ember did I mean, not work out this it's... game. He had very little impact. EG, they played it fantastic. It was it's a over. close game for the most part, but this is <laughs> over. EG is called, and EG will secure the series 2-1. to one. I mean, EG secures upper bracket, but this is the least convincing upper bracket secure I I've seen, right? They, yesterday, they looked real shaky versus Liquid. I said I don't want to take away from them, but this game was easily losable as well, right? If he somehow does get that blink call, he steals the, the Roshan kill, gets the Aegis. Even if they lose that fight, it's a whole different game. You can't just push uphill like they do here, and... I mean, SCC, it, it really, he got uh, caught four to five times. As an Ember, your whole, you're, you're like a Weaver. Your whole tool set is your mobility. And when that gets cut in half, there goes your game, I guess. I, I don't know. It was kind of a rough situation. Because he I, I think he needed Yules against uh, Dark Willow. But, like, towards the end of the game, you felt like you really needed Lincoln's BKB as your two defensive items, not the Yule Scepter. Because that Dragonite, Abed was so good at being able to target him yeah, down. Instantly. He was very disciplined yeah. about that. Especially, I thought the, the dieback around the Roshan pit, I thought that was the most impressive play from Abed. It just, like, most of the time, when you see that buyback, you have to full-out retreat. But he saw an opportunity, he just went for it, and it worked out it uh, really well for them. Uh, I kind of look at the opposite way, though. Okay. Um, I see this more as, like, Aster is a good team. They're in the lower bracket, but they are a good team. I think, like, um, everything that I saw from them, from the way they structured team fights and stuff, like um, like XXS and Bobica going off in, in at least two of these games, Bobica in this last one for, for sure. sure, XXS has just been a solid uh, almost every single game for them. I think they're drafting like they have good ideas. I think the way in like game two they drafted uh, into the the mag pick, I think was pretty smart. I, I think this team is good. Uh, I don't. I, I think this t this group is actually maybe very tough. I think these three teams were were all pretty good. Yeah, no, I, I'd agree. You know, I, I think you know Aster can look at that game and 
you know, they, they tried Safe Line Ember, and there are a lot of pros out there that they'll laugh at the idea of Safe Line Ember. They, they, it's just, it's not a thing. This hero needs the mid lane, it needs that level of vantage. If you're playing it in any sort of side lane, you're going to have a tough game. You're, you're behind, you don't have that impact that, that you need to as the hero, and, and then come late game, suddenly everyone else is sort of a nightmare head. You're, you're playing these fights into a jug that... You know, RTC's got his Abyssal Blade. He's got these items that, that just put a stop to you. They have so much follow-up, lockdown, and control. It, it, it's, it's just game over. So I think, you know, SCCC, sure, he looked a, a bit all over the place in that match, but I think he was he was put in a hard place with that, that hero pick for him. Well, and uh, EG, they make it to the upper bracket, not as convincing as their fans might have wanted it. And we see the groups right there. And if you don't know, yep. J-Storm versus Beast Coast, game number three is going on at Beyond the Summit 2. And J-Storm has oh. a very hefty lead. Three slots for NA, you sons of bitches. They're all three going whoa, to the whoa, upper whoa, bracket. Whoa, what? whoa, 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 whoa. What? Whoa. What? This is Tinker Beast Coast. Yeah. I could see them still bringing this game back. Versus a Chen with five magic resist creeps. And wasn't that the old sort of American special, the Tinker Kunker? Yeah. No, it all. I remember. Yeah. That was the was game it, you cast with me, was right? It back in the day. It was day. the first game yeah. before. If you didn't know, it was maybe 2015 at a hub. I remember you telling and me it about was, it. And uh, it was. We casted the game, and I remember <laughs> I was like, please, God. It was the Jubei team, I think Pretty Boy Swag at the time. When they drafted Kunkka for his pick, I said, Owen, I apologize. This will be the worst game of Go to you watch. <laughs> they drafted Tinker the next pick, and Jubei was level seven. Just sat in the fountain. 55 minutes in and would only X the Tinker, so he was guaranteed to <laughs> he survive. He would never die. And they lost that game. Yeah, how do you lose? But it was you an 80. Well, they lost. Oh, okay. And it was an 80 minute loss. <laughs> the story, and it was the girl. worst <laughs> game I have ever. I just remember. Yeah. It was the first game he had known. He's like, I'm ready to watch some NA Dota. And I, right when they saw the <laughs> Kunkka pick, <laughs> I was like, I am sorry. This is not true. And well, it really was. <laughs> this true is it representative of our region. <laughs> oh, but yeah. So beyond the summit, too. Obviously, yeah. uh, J Storm versus Beast Coast, last game of the of the group stage. And you guys did see that. So we we know a lot of our matchups. And who are you most impressed with, and who are you the least impressed with now? I said most impressed with uh, Liquid has to be. So has yeah. to be compared to what I was expecting. From them coming into this. ESL as Most well impressed. as Dream League. They looked they did. They yeah. they didn't look very good and they, they showed up and now guaranteed not last place at the major, which already is good since they're in the upper bracket right now. And uh least impressed anyone, uh, maybe Beast Coast, what? I mean top ATI. I don't know. Uh, Little I, I mean the the like the sickness stuff. And again, yeah. it's Whisper dude, I've seen Whisper carry so many games on Tinker. Okay. I th this yeah. game is not over. I think they could still pull it back. Um, look at that score for the memes, Grant. I am. Three, uh, two, two. Uh, there we go. Give us one sec. I'm Cap is looking up the other uh, the matchups so we I'm can get them to you. to pull up the other groups. Cause we can get them on the screen. Let's get the, can we get the groups up again? Oh, yeah, sure. Sorry about that, everyone. There you we know. go. Look. There we have it. Boom. In your face. What are we looking um, at here, Cap? Who are you impressed with? Oh, Who Gambit. Not Gambit was definitely. Um, okay. Least impressed with because I expect more out of out of them. Um, that 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 group may be tough. Uh, just because like I think Beast Coast is a good team still. Uh, and I think IG is definitely a good team. So maybe J Storm is better than uh I would have given him credit for. I think Gambit was like a pretty good contender for second place in that group. Um, but there's no like clear bottom I guess of that group. So maybe that's just a rough. A rough go around. Uh, and I mean, I mean, in general, going off that, I mean, look at CIS right now. I mean, Gambit zero two, Team Spirit zero two. Oh, that's been a rough group. And it's Fnatic. Weird. Fnatic. That's uh, maybe I another think. tough one. Uh, again, it's like these GSL groups. You just don't. You never like, know. You're judging yourself like based off of the, the strength of three other teams. Like Fnatic getting third in their group. That's disappointing. They're uh, they have the the skill to be a a top eight team, a top you know three team in in a major. Uh, but their third place in their group. Is Alliance and Vici that good? Or, you know, is Fnatic just worse than you would expect? I don't know. Yep. Well, that does mean it brings us to the end of the group stage, the end of today. And, well, it, it, it was a good one. I mean, we saw EG. They, they, saw, they struggled through. They ended up getting it, you know. 
and they'll meet up with some other people. That means tomorrow. Do we have a schedule for tomorrow? We yeah, do we? Is that all? We are going to have something to one. show you with uh, what, what you can expect tomorrow very shortly. Yes. So the winner of this J-Storm versus Beast Coast matches into Team Liquid. Okay, so winnable. And the team. loser matches into Team Adroit. Okay, so Which winnable as well. I, I would say, I think for the... Sure. For me, I would say the the two weakest teams here definitely feel like Team Unknown yeah. and Team Android right now, yeah. which I think most people even going into the event might say those are the two teams. And Everything. they've showed they, they that you got to win a game, obviously, and it's tough. Now you're in BO1, so if you do win a game, it's the best game you can win, obviously, because you move up, a lot of extra money, a lot of more DPC points as well. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, so Fnatic plays E-Home, which that's – or Fnatic plays Unknown, pardon me, which – that's going to be a tough one for the, the down south. Yeah, it's, it's going to be tough. Uh, tough it, for unknown. And yep. what, what's the, the matchup you're most hyped for? Obviously, they don't see it, but you can just tell from the, the lower two bracket teams. Or from or the, the whole thing. I, I'd say it's got to be EGIG, I'd say. Yeah, excited to see what EG's EG able to bring in the, in, the, in, the, in the upper against <laughs> IG. Minor winners cruising through the group stage. Um, I think I think that will be another big test for EG. I, I don't, uh, IG is not going to be an easy opponent. I think you know, IG is probably... Probably favoured in that matchup, but EG they're they're certainly showing good stuff, and already from sort of day one to day two, they're already tidying up their actor a lot more. EG. What about that top game, TNC Predator? I mean, versus that's Alliance. gonna be fun. That's it's, just gonna be fun. That feels like it might be the the highest skill, maybe possibly that, that we've seen. Or uh, will yeah. TNC just run over them? Because TNC is gonna run good. over them. You think they're gonna really? run over them? I, I mean, TNC is just, is that good? They're favoured for sure, but. What, why? If, a li if Alliance get like a, a Nico baby void, you know, things can happen. You know, there's certain sort of drafts that things could happen. I'm sure TNC is definitely the team that, that you would pit as being the favorites there. But who knows? Alliance have come up with some uh, real gems of, a, of performances in, in some of the recent tournaments that we've seen them in. And there, there it, is. it is. Can we, uh, can we show my, my screen on uh, <laughs> at some point? I'm I'm gonna show you why I think TNC oh. is gonna smash Alliance. Okay, yeah, you see right there, purge in the morning. Purge in yeah. the morning. He's gonna be opening up the show, and that means there'll be one. Oh. There's an upper bracket round one, yep. and then look at that four best of ones. We are gonna be chopping some oh, teams yeah. up, Boom. and we'll be on that one, right? I Hell, think, yeah. Yeah. we're, we're doing the four up, games. We? Are we doing the four? No, oh, I think we're all mixed up. Like well, I think like because right. you and Trent are doing some, yeah, and then sure. you'll see loads of those are different faces tomorrow. We're yeah. gonna have we're gonna have a lot more people involved all, in the coverage. Yeah, uh, all tomorrow. the other people that you haven't your seen trends, so far. Your purges, your, fogs, your lyricals, yeah. your fogs. Everybody's yeah. here. Everybody. Everybody. It's like a smash. And so, Cap, I believe we are gonna head over to your screen now. What do you want to show us? I want to show you why I think TNC is gonna. Why this matchup is not even okay. between TNC and Alliance. And that's uh, the ESL one Hamburg. Okay, so we're looking, and what Too are we seeing here? In, the, in under an hour. Okay. And that, I see I see a, a void and on you're Alliance's right. they did side have the, there, and, and they actually lost that game even quicker. They did? <laughs> so, so do you, I mean, you don't think Alliance... What do I know then? You know, we'll see. I mean, yeah, TNC, have, they've been pretty much on fire. What a group. Sort of. I think them and Vici were definitely yeah. the favorites coming in, so you just think that this is going to be, it's going to just be a repeat, nothing really I mean, learned. Well, Alliance maybe. also lost to Gambit, right? Gambit got bottom of their group. True. So uh, uh, I, I just think like Alliance, they're they're a good team, but like just based off of like the early lands and stuff, I think a lot of people put them as like, oh shit, they're a top three team in the world. But uh, you know, <laughs> I think that very quickly got chipped away. Um, that there are some teams, teams that just stand out a lot better. And for my money, TNC is a top three team here. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I think, I, TNC, yeah. I think again, TNC team, yeah. is like that good Agreed. right now. So uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of teams. That can stand to them, and uh, I I look forward to seeing you know like whoever like if TNC does beat Alliance, then whoever beats whoever wins, and they match up in the semifinals. You know, like I want to see tougher opponents against TNC. I want to see tougher opponents against IG. That's why I also think IG versus EG is like a hype one. Yeah, yeah a hype I agree. one because I think that that it, that is a real test to see how good IG is. Okay. Of well. the lower bracket, though, I'm looking forward to Aster Gambit, the CIS versus China teams. I think those are actually kind of close. E Home versus Spirit and Aster versus Gambit. Oh man, those are toss ups. They are, and they they're they're going to be back to back tomorrow as well. But that brings us to the end of the group stage. We are going to be signing off. You know, it's early here and it's late over in China. So as the group stage ends, we'll see you tomorrow. Make sure to tune in early if you want to see Purge. 
in the morning. Stick around. Well, don't stick around don't right stick now. Around. <laughs> well, I mean, stick are around. you sure you don't want to watch the replay? What the yeah, hell? Yeah, just stay yeah. for 15 hours or something. Watch all the Dota you can't know, but we will end up seeing you tomorrow. I'm not sure. I think it's earlier. I think it's later. I don't know why the hell I'm still talking. We'll see you tomorrow, my friends. Purge in the morning.